Well, here we are, back for another week. There's, Harassing the feral Democrats. so much stuff. <laughs> I, he's got a pile. I got a pile. And we're probably not going to cover. We'll see. As much as we can. We will see. I mean, you got Alabama. You got the Marshall. You got, you got the, the uh, AG. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you got Alabama. It's amazing. I'm going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk about that, but let's start with a prayer. <clears throat> Good Lord, we thank you for being there for us and giving us your divine strength to move forward in these times in this country. It's really some challenging times and some the way life has changed and the attitudes of people not caring what they do how they destroy people's lives is just beyond it and the money that flows, the evil of the money and what its sources do. We just ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your strength and for your blessing. In your name we pray, amen. I read The Advocate basically every day. My condolences. <laughs> well, it's because some of this comes from there. Mm -hmm. And the opinion section is basically 96% liberal. Liberal. A person, Amazing. A person wrote an article <coughs> previous to this article that I have in my hand that said how conservative the advocate was. Compared to what? And, and I'm like... Talk about somebody who's drank, who drank the Kool-Aid with Jim Jones. I'm like, what newspaper were they reading? Somebody was because definitely... The Advertiser and The Advocate, both of those papers, seemed to stomp all over Trump and Amazing. everything else. Amazing. Okay. Advocate Not Too Conservative is the title. After reading David Porter's hilarious letter... I'm writing to inquire if the advocate is sending out two different newspapers each day. Because <laughs> I'm definitely not getting the same paper he does. He's accusing the advocate of conservative bias because of an article written by Dan Fagan and some cartoons about Hillary Clinton's many misdeeds. Excuse me. Evidently, Mr. Porter misses the cartoons that regularly appear making fun of President Donald Trump, other Republicans, and the GOP in general. He also evidently ignores the columns that are regularly appear by Clarence Page, Eugene Robinson, Richard Cohen, Steve and Koki Roberts, Georgie Ann Geyer, Robert J. Salen, and a few others which lambast President Trump and the Republicans. Porter cannot stand the balance the advocate tries to bring to its editorial pages, then I suggest he subscribe to the New York Times and the Washington Post he mentions, where he will get nothing but anti-conservative, anti-Republican propaganda every day. <clears throat> Porter identifies himself as a former English professor. I am certainly glad he did not teach or indoctrinate young people taking political science with his far left leaning reviews. And this guy was a retired sales representative in River Ridge. I, I read that and I, I'm surprised that they, that they printed that. Every once in a while, I think they let one slip through just to try to show that they're not uh, completely left leaning. You know, they'll let a one percenter through. Well. When you look at the job they did on Moore. Yeah. And. <clears throat> Would you see the job that Fox did on Moore? The day before the election, Fox oversampled Democrats purposely to show uh, bogus results. You know, you can't even trust Fox anymore. I put on Facebook that the only thing that I like about Fox, Tucker Carlson, Judge Jeanine, Laura Ingram, and Hannity. That's it. The rest of it. Is, is a joke. You know, the, the thing is, is that, <clears throat> and we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but 
the, the things that are going on today in the United States, the source of the money, Soros and a few other billionaires uh, trying to undo everything because they all <clears throat> still haven't gotten over the fact they lost. Jim, there's a lot of people on the net that say that this is exactly like the lead up to the first Civil War. That, that you had irreconcilable differences clashing, you had big money people in positions clashing, and it, it ended up in open warfare. Here, here's the thing. This whole thing that happened in Alabama, it's a travesty. we'll discuss this deeper later. But the thing is, is that if this is allowed to continue with what took place in Alabama, we know that there was a lot of fraud in Alabama. And not just Democrat either. No, the Republican Democrat. GOP establishment, they, they wanted Doug Jones to win almost more than the Democrats. Yeah, but the point I'm getting at is, is that it's the technique and, and what they did. Mm -hmm. Trot out the bimbos. Strutted out these bimbos. They were all proven to be liars. Oh, yeah. And, and But it had a major effect on the election. And the thing that's so bad about it, Jim, is the mainstream media did not even scratch the surface of investigating any of the allegations at all. They just, you oh, know what, no. you know what's really frosting me, Jim, is the fact that you hear these people on the, on the net. Oh, every woman deserves to be heard. Every woman. No, they do not. Credible allegations deserve to be heard. Exactly. This, this stuff here, the woman who claimed she, she was abused at the restaurant, first off, she lied and said she was 15, went to work there at the restaurant, you got to be 16. She said she waited on uh, more at the bar. That's a lie. Only the bartender handles the bar business. She got the hours of the place wrong. She got the placement of the doors wrong. She even said that he abused her in a car and the doors automatically locked. We didn't have those type of locks in cars until the 90s. <laughs> you know, and I mean, the yearbook was shown to be a lie. The woman who said that Moore called her on her phone in the bedroom, her mama said in an interview, she didn't even have a phone in the bedroom. I mean, just, just, I mean, easy stuff to refute. But Jim, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you know what this is, Jim? This goes back to the old Democrat liberal saying, it's the intent that counts and not the results. Exactly. And it also follows the well-trained... Yep. The uh, Linsky model. I mean, you can't get any more perfect at this stuff. Yeah, don't talk about the issues destroy the person. Well, look, what did, uh, what did Dumbbell do? Dumbbell went after Vitter on the, uh, the prostitute thing how many years before? Let's not talk about the years. issues. Because, you know, Jim, I had a former co-worker who said that he couldn't vote... Uh, he, he had to vote for Dumbbell because he couldn't stand uh, voting for another conservative Republican. I looked him square in the face and I said, if you think Jindal was a conservative Republican, you don't even know what you're talking about. I said, he spent money. I, I will submit this. Dumbbell is at fault for a lot of the problems we got, but Jindal dug the hole and watered it. Oh, yeah. Jindal. No. Because this last four years. Yeah, Mama Blanco gave Jindal a surplus. And that little no-good yo-yo uh, spit us into the ground, and he had a bunch of Republicans helping him. We're going to get into that subject a little bit more, but I think one of the uh, most interesting things that happened this week... <laughs> we did get a reaction. Oh, yeah. This is a good one. I mean, we, we've been talking about Pope, the Marshal... For how long? Two years? You can't make this stuff up. Folks, he and I, with all the trouble that Pope is in, you would never think that he would go and do this. Nemesis of City Marshal accused of writing bad checks in 1997. Let's see. 20 years? 20 years? Yeah, three checks. And the statute of limitations on a bad check warrant is what, two years? Two years. And it was under $200? Lafayette City Marshal Brian Pope's office sunk deeper into controversy on Monday 
after executing a 20-year-old arrest warrant against one of Pope's nemesis, they'd spelled that wrong, for a misdemeanor offense. The warrants for Stephen Wilkerson, an organizer in the failed recall campaign against Pope, relate to four counts of issuing worthless checks totaling less than $200, an offense that has a two-year statute of limitations. Let's see. Amazing. 1997, 2017, two years, which means after 1999, mm -hmm. there was no more. You could not institute that. Wilkerson was booked shortly before 5.30 p.m. Monday, which on Monday was Pope's birthday. <clears throat> that was after they announced it had not gathered enough signatures for a recall. I can only speculate the marshal's office felt a little bolder, Wilkerson said on Tuesday. Perhaps this was a birthday gift to Marshal Pope. Pope is facing seven criminal charges related to involvement in the 2015 Lafayette Parish Sheriff's race. The perjury and malfeasance charges stem from his accusations that he used public resources to harm the successful campaign of Mark Garber. Stephen Wilkerson, an organizer of the recall against Pope, speaks to media Tuesday outside the parish courthouse following his arrest on a bad check warrant. Amazing. I mean... You just can't make this up. It's, it's just... I, I want you to understand. When you thought it couldn't get better. I, I, I did the thing. He just keeps digging a hole deeper. So I guess the civil suit will, will be flying very shortly against Marshall Pope on top of criminal. Well, folks, I, I'll tell you what him and I, <clears throat> we had supper, surmised. And, and he just thinks he's above the law. Well, so far he has been. I he's mean, untouchable. We're talking... The court case is February 20th, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see, it was September, it was May, it was March. Here, here's what I surmise, and, and so does Brett. This guy is getting 230000 At least. At least 230000 a year. So the longer you drag this out. The more money, and it counts toward his retirement. Well, in my eyes, he shouldn't get retirement. This is the thing, though. Until he is convicted, he will stay in office. And remember, I've got inside information that he has been offered a plea deal to a misdemeanor. He only has to step down. He does not lose any of his retirements or anything. But, but he's just... I'm telling you, there's a court date for February 20th. It'll never happen. What happens, the never odds happen. are they'll file another suit and it'll have to be continued to later. Mm -hmm. This will go on until one, what you said. He's out of office. Or, or he's out of office. Mm -hmm. And he will have collected all this money. Yep. Look, he used taxpayers' money. There's no question about that. And that is a total malfeasance in office felony. And if he is convicted on a felony, he can never hold a office as a police officer and other and our public official. Or public and the other official. thing is, I think they can they can they can also go after his retirement too. If you're convicted in office so. of a felony. But here's the rub. <clears throat> I have it on very good information that he's already been offered a plea to a misdemeanor. With all of the crazy stuff he's done, they're going to allow him to plead to a misdemeanor. Who's offering that, Stutes? Yep. Yep. He was already offered to plead. He's, they're not going to, he's not going to do it because the, the longer he keeps the money going, that counts toward his retirement. So if he goes all three years left on his, uh, his, uh, his term, it, it brings his Stutes. retirement. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I wonder how that works. They're good buddies. They buddies. But here's the rub. Now, Judge David Smith in the article has finally started to, to ask questions about the uh, evidence, the procedure, and what's going on. 
But my question is, where's Judge Jules Edwards? Judge Edwards is the what person. What happened to him all of a sudden? Yeah. Why? Why is that community service not being held uh, uh, to account? Can you imagine if you or I were convicted on something and told we had to do community service? You know, Jim, if we probably talked to the sheriff and we got convicted, you and I could probably get on that airport grass and garbage detail and work side by side in orange out there at the airport. I'll weed it and you cut the grass. You know, that's where we would be. That's where we would you be. Know, so, retaliation. And, and I mean... And where's the AG in this? Just, this right yeah. here, where's the AG? That, oh, that right there is an example oh, Jim, of... Has the AG gotten back from golfing with Trump at Mar-a-Lago? He probably hadn't recovered from that golf trip. Uh, probably That not. he paid for with our funds, by the way. Yeah. But, moving on to a different subject. Mm. And I'm getting through some little BS stuff. We have this football dilemma. Okay, what did I do with that article? Somewhere in here, but Saint season ticket holder sues for refund. Oh yeah, I had that that one down. <laughs> oh, that's great. What, where did I put the one with the football player that got arrested? The guy in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> it's like. You can't make this stuff up, people. Might be the page underneath this mm -hmm. one. Nope. Okay, a Morgan City man is suing the New Orleans Saints for a refund on his season tickets, saying some players have disrespected the national anthem before games. Lee Dragna filed a lawsuit Monday in the 24th Judicial District Court in Gretna, seeking a refund for the tickets as well as attorney fees claiming the protest by some players against police brutality, racial injustice has prevented him and his family from enjoying the games. I'm glad to see this. Dragna said he hasn't attended a game since the first home game of 2017 season against the New England Patriots on September 17th, when he said some of the players did not come out for the singing of the national anthem. When they did come out, the suit says, they passed directly in front of where the petitioner and his guests were seated. Many of the fans in that area booed and cursed at the Saints players. And, and I think he's looking at his, he had four tickets, I believe. Ooh, he spent some money. Matt, Matt Dragna, a businessman in Morgan City, said Tuesday that the rowdy, angry reaction of the people around his seats has made the tickets unusable by him and his family, as well as customers he would otherwise give the tickets to. Wow. He said the behavior of some fans upset by the protest, cursing, spilling beer is borderline dangerous, though he said he thinks the responsibility for that behavior ultimately rests not with the fans, but with owner Tom Vincent. The Saints created that behavior by condoning it. And, and it, it goes on and on, and a lot of us know the situation. I, I, big football fan, guess what? The only game that I watched a little bit of was the very first Saints game. Since then, and I can tell you, my wife, <laughs> she came in the other night, and I was watching a high school football game, and they had the fleur de lis on their helmet, and she says, you watching the Saints? <laughs> and I went, no, ma'am. Uh, local. No, ma local. This, this high school football, this Louisiana but you high see, school Jim, football. That's the thing the NFL will soon learn. There are so many alternatives to watching NFL football that it's pathetic. And the other thing that I've talked about with you many times, they can get rid of all of these pampered millionaires who are about to not be millionaires thanks to the boycott by, by us. And they could bring up a bunch of college players and put them to work on the field, and they'd uh -huh. be more than happy to play. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what I see going on. Uh, Darius Geis, top-notch running back for LSU, is thinking about coming back next year. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> coming back for his senior year. And not going to the NFL. Not going to the NFL. And I, I would, uh, here we go. This fits right in with the Well, program. Jim, I'm telling you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the boycott to totally bomb on the uh, 
on the Super Bowl. I'm, to, I'm hoping the Super Bowl falls so flat it, it that nobody wants to advertise, that nobody goes, that nobody wants to pay money to see it, and nobody wants to pay for those crazy tickets. Where's it going to be this year? Do we know? I don't know. Mr. T, do you know? Where's the, let me get, see if I Google it. Google. 2018 Super Bowl. I, I forget where it's at. Anyways, while they're looking that up, NFL player arrested yells racial slurs at cops. A Seattle Seahawks player has been arrested for disorderly conduct in a nightclub in Atlanta, Georgia. Seattle Seahawks guy is in Georgia. Minneapolis. They're going to play on February the 4th in Minneapolis at the U.S. Bank Stadium. Okay. It will be interesting because, man, uh, Jackson, Jacksonville uh, Jaguars are, are uh, working on a, a bankruptcy chapter 11 to reorganize their uh, thing. Their, their fans, their seats are half empty. And the other thing the NFL is doing, just like Hillary, they sell them tickets for $3 a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Defensive tackle Malik McDowell was arrested in the early hours of Sunday morning outside the SL Lounge Club in, in Atlanta. At around 2.21 a.m., the sportsman allegedly shouted at a security guard that he had already paid $600. However, staff claims he didn't give them any cash. According to an incident report filed by the Shambly Police Department and seen by TMZ Sports, they got to know they're under scrutiny. Security allowed him back in before kicking him out again. A cop said the player poured out a couple of bottles of alcohol while inside. Mm -hmm. Officers then tried to get McDowell into the back of the police car where he allegedly swore at them saying F both of y'all ho ass and then some other not so nice things. I bet I get out. I got more money than y'all. Y'all ain't got enough money for me and called them crackers and broke ass and then such and such. The Seattle Seahawks have been one of the more vocal teams in defending players that have been kneeling during the national anthem. Michael Bennett recently claimed that the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department profiled him despite multiple surveillance cameras showing him running from the scene of an alleged shots fired call. Now, Jim, he's a member of the National Felony League. He knows they're going to chase him because he's already got felony charges. He knows the drill. It's just like a dog that wants to chase cars, you know. But, he's got an instinct to run. But you see, one section in there, the attitude, I got money. I can do whatever I want. That type of attitude. You know, I mean, I I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people are missed. They, <clears throat> I got into a discussion and uh, they said, you're not watching, you know, I'm not going to let them people take away my enjoyment. I don't think it's about my enjoyment. I think it's about living with principles in your life, and it's about being serious I about what my you do. Country. Okay, I spent 13 months in Vietnam, and I saw those flags on them caskets. And I've said this before on this show, and I'm telling you that picture never goes away. I can tell you what my vision is right now. That it was a big water area in the middle of the base at Dong Tam, and I can see those cassettes going by to go to the C-130. To get loaded. To be transported. Mm -hmm. You never forget that. But you yeah. know what's the bad part about all of this, Jim? Is that we have felony offenders who have had privilege all their lives and career Folks, they're only felons because they've gotten 20 previous arrests and only got, got hooked up on the last one, huh, Jim? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the thing is, they got all of this, this special treatment, they're multimillionaires, and they got the gall, the unmitigated gall to whine and cry and say they're oppressed? Well, dead gum, Jim, I'd like some of that oppression. I'd like to live in a multi-million dollar mansion and drive a hundred thousand dollar car and all of that. That's oppression? Really? Mm -hmm. Good Lord. Here, here's That's the oppression? issue. Ooh. A hundred million dollars is what the NFL gave to social justice. For social justice. That is a travesty. How, how much did the players donate? And the players weren't happy with it, Jim. Oh, no, they, they wanted more. They want more. Here, here's the thing. Those players, and this is how, in my eyes, those players have the opportunity because they have are in a position to be leaders in a positive direction and teach these kids not to do things that they do. But they Eight, are not. 850-some felons out of 1,600 and something players in the NFL. Mm -hmm. What is that? 50%. Yep. And they, they could, some of them are, 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 are doing good things in their community. Not all of them. We're not, we can't classify 100%. But I think all of this falls back on the owners, <clears throat> And Roger, the idiot Goodell. Who just got his contract renewed for what, 200 million a year? Yeah. And free airplane flights all the way around the I, world? You know. You can't make this stuff up. See, see people, you better wake up. Jim, would you this have even, part of it. in your worst nightmares, like five years ago, ever dreamed that, that feral Democrat NFL pampered millionaires would be kneeling for a lie and causing the NFL to go broke. Would you ever what have even thought it, of this? Point zero four. Point zero zero four five percent, percent chance that a police officer will kill a, a, a black man. What, what's the percentage in the neighborhood? Oh, black on black. Oh, you, you've got a... About a about a ninety eight percent chance that another feral Democrat's gonna turn your lights off and steal your crack. But the thing is is that we talk about being shot by the police officer, but but the black on black It's not talked about. It's not talked about. So Jim, black lives don't matter. Not to them. No, not really. And we don't hear them talking about Chicago. The thing is, is what they talk about guns. <clears throat> California. What's California doing on, on January 1st? Yeah, they're putting restrictions on ammo purchases. you got to register for bullets. Yep, Excuse just like Massachusetts. They have a bad earthquake out there yet? I will. Never mind. Will. <laughs> but the thing is, is that these are, I, I mean, we can't make this stuff up. But the whole deal is, for the last nine years, starting nine years ago when I started to get involved and the education I've had with Brett and Tom, whom I miss dearly, who, who really opened my eyes to a lot of things because I was a little country boy and grew up in the middle of where history was created in this country. Jim, and we're gonna write a book about you. Yankee goes south. <laughs> Yankee goes south. That's a Hey, that could mean a lot of things. <laughs> but the whole thing is, is that I've opened my eyes. Uh, uh, and, and, and now I, I really see the vision of what's going on in this country and, and what people are trying to, to do. Let's see. Connie. Howdy. Hello. Hey, Jim. You were saying that the NFL gives up. A hundred million to social justice. They just did how about a much, month ago. Okay. How much have they given to the homeless vets? That's the thing. They pulled money from veterans causes, from breast cancer research. They took all the money from all other causes, according to the articles, multiple articles, and gave it to the United Negro College Fund and other social justice causes. Okay, I just wanted to make my point. Yes, gotcha. indeed. In, in your 
for your show. Jim, I've been texting you. You're not answering. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was on a, he was on a, Connie, you got to understand, he was going downhill on a tirade, so you don't want to break up the momentum, you know. He had that momentum going. <laughs> no, we, we don't want to do that, but I just wanted to make my point. All right. Yep. Thanks, Connie. Enjoy the show. All right. Y'all are great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Just a couple. Good yep. But that's a good point, because they took all other charitable donations and pull them from other worthy causes to give this to these feral Democrats, and here's the rub. It wasn't enough. The players want more. Yeah, and how much did the players give? Oh, nothing, of course. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't want You know, Jim, I repeat it. our money. I hope they go bankrupt. I hope they go bankrupt. I hope all these pampered millionaires have their houses foreclosed on, lose their fancy white girlfriends and white wives, lose all their little toys and stuff. I'm going to work for this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Soros will put him to work. <laughs> but, I mean, we can't make this stuff up. This, this, this thing that I read about the NFL player, this isn't the only incident. They actually had a football player that got ejected from the game on Sunday who wanted to go after a fan in the stands. Here's our buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, are good. How y'all doing tonight? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm on high blood pressure medicine now. Oh! Two heart medicine and oh. something else, so that's why I got to try to keep you calm. <laughs> good luck on that, my man. Good yeah. luck on oh, yeah, that. Real, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, just a real quick to the previous caller. At least you didn't have to send a picture like I did a while back. But anyway, that's another story. But uh, talking about, according to the uh, FBI, what, I think the, doesn't the FBI have a, some kind of division of statistics or something? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the, the UCR crime UCR statistics. Case. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, yeah well, anyway, if I'm not mistaken, is he the 80 or 90 percent of black men in this country or kill by other black men? Yep, in Chicago it's even worse than that, but yeah, that's Chicago yeah. and New Orleans. That's they special. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, so just a, yeah you're right. I want to make a quick comment about the, the Alabama sure. election last night. You know, see, I watch CNN. I watch, I, I like to watch Don, when I'm kind of bored, I like to watch Don Lemon and I like to watch Chris Matthews and Rachel. Oh, Matt, well, um, it's a good thing to see no what the, needs medicine. Yeah, it's a good thing to watch and see what they're saying, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but listen, I check, listen this, this, this is not a joke. Sometimes I check my blood pressure. I got a machine. Be before I watch one of these clowns, <laughs> you just in the one for this. <laughs> After I watch it, it was 190 something. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then, you know, to make a long story short, <laughs> these people are ignorant. That's a good they word. Don't. No, but they don't understand that the main reason more lost was because of all these false allegations. And voter it's fraud. It's not a referendum on Trump, you're a bunch of dumb asses. You're ignorant, all of y'all. So y'all up there flapping your wings and cutting cold wheels, being hushed up, upset. It's not an upset. I mean, it, I mean, it, it is an upset, but if you go by with more at the face, think about it. Yep. He only lost about 20 out of... There was a there was about 1.3 million votes cast. He lost about 20,000 votes. The exact number of write-ins. The exact number of the write-ins. Exactly, and not just, and not just that. Yep. 700 gate evangelicals. Yeah, he got 80 percent. But listen to me. 80 percent of 100 is a lot less than 80 percent of a thousand. You get what, you get where I'm going, huh? Oh you yeah. Don't have to get 100 percent of a vote, if only got a, a few people come out. I know. Except, hey, over 700,000 people that voted for Trump stayed home. You know what I'm saying? They stupid. So anyway, I don't want to run that. Like I said, I'm preaching to the choir. But, oh, uh, yeah, buddy. Oh, no, but no, wait, 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 not, wait, not, before I go, not really preach to the choir. You, you would be surprised. There, there are a lot of uh, Hillary and Democratic supporters that watch your show. They just can't get through. The clowns, they're watching. They, you know, they try to get through and... Uh, you know, uh, upset the show. They're watching, so I'm talking to all of y'all yo-yos. <laughs> oh, you got me Thank you, man. I got a, I got a story here that's going to light a fire under a lot all of right, people. <laughs> Everybody knows that the Ninth Circuit out in San Francisco 
is the most liberal, overturned oh. Oh. Uh, appeals court in the country. Guess what, folks? Former Chief Justice of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal, Mr. Alex Kaczynski, age 67, has had multiple women make sexual harassment claims who worked as clerks or interns. <laughs> Folks, I am tired, sick and tired, of hearing how the left, the liberals, advocate for women and then we like this. Yeah. How the Democrat Party advocates for women and Conyers and Franken are up there with the women. Going and they got to uh, yeah. things in pajamas and yeah, and they got a seventeen walking around his office in his underwear. And they got a seventeen million dollar bimbo eruption fund up there. Folks, I'm getting tired of, of hearing from the liberals about how they they're concerned for minorities and you look at New Orleans and you look at uh, at Detroit and then you hear stuff like this. This is insane. Liberals are hypocrites. Liberals are hypocrites. It is amazing. Well, this is just the articles, two of the articles on the forgery of the yearbook used against Roy Moore. Uh, they've done handwriting analysis from what they could actually see of it and it makes no sense whatsoever because the ink was different, the signatures were different, and yet again, Roy Moore lost because mainstream media was following the Alinsky agenda and did not investigate what they put out. They just they don't investigate anything. Boy, you you're talking you talking good about that one. We have a you know in in, in that sense of what goes on now. Report, George Soros operative trying to impeach Trump with illegal money. But there's a catch to this. Mm -hmm. This this was, I read this article and I said, man, I gotta print this. Y'all know what 501c3 and four is? Oh yeah. Politically, you cannot, C3, you can't get politically involved at all. And the C4, which the Patriots are, you can to a certain percentage. That's why you got me. Since I'm not officially part of the Patriots movement, I can I can talk about things that Jim can't. Well, <clears throat> David Brock, founder of Media Matters for America, is drawing attention to himself for his involvement in a plot to unseat and discredit President Trump. Brock's involvement. Brox Media Matters is registered as a 501c3 nonprofit, which grants them tax-exempt status. That status, which is not awarded lightly, comes with stipulations. One such stipulation requires that nonprofits are prohibited from participating in any political activities, particularly those related <coughs> to funding them. The pro <clears throat> that prohibition may be construed as direct or indirect support or opposition to a given political candidate, office, or ideology. Media Matters seems to have violated this clause, having granted nearly a quarter of a million dollars to a Brock organization, though it's still not clear whether the money went to the American Bridge 21st Century Foundation or another organization. A super PAC bearing a similar name, American Bridge 21st Century PAC. According to the nonprofit's financial statement 2016, as well as their filings with the IRS, money was obviously given, though the funds ultimately evaded capture and found their way to one of Brock's organizations. Funny, huh? Both of Brock's organizations have a noted history of engaging in inappropriate political behavior in violation of their tax-exempt clause. The organizations both face FEC complaint detailing a scheme wherein the organizations allegedly plan to hide, to hide, donor identities so that funds could be allocated without alerting authorities. Possible, uh, I like this, P 
possible Soros involvement. Mm -hmm. Really? This is one way that George Soros, Democrat mega donor, funnels his money toward causes meant to impair and impede the Republican agenda. It's also explicitly illegal. The IRS code, and it tells you what section to go, that nonprofits are absolutely prohibited from directly or indirectly participating in or intervening any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition of any candidate for an elective office. If Media Matters is found guilty of using monies it received in charitable donations to empower political <coughs> candidates, then it's likely that the IRS would have the legal precedence to investigate the organization, which could further lead to their revoking the group's tax exempt status. Now here, I got a good one for you. Folks, we got more dirt on the Clintons. Two Utah Monument era areas, excuse me, were a re reward to a large Clinton donor. Now, if you check back to Monday, Trump signed two proclamations that shrink federally protected lands by two million acres. Cool. The Bear Ears National Monument will shrink 85% to 2001, excuse me, two, yeah, 201,000 acres. And the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument will be cut by 39% to only a million acres. Now, you're asking exactly what happened. I got the dirt. I got the dirt. President Clinton, back in the day, set aside 100 point, excuse me, 1 1.7 million acres of Utah lands as a national monument. Now, here is why. Because uh, Bill Clinton's land grab in Utah with the 1.7 million placed off limits to an energy starved U.S. up to 62 billion tons of environmentally safe coal worth $1.2 trillion. Hmm. That was in fact a payoff to the family of James Riotti. Now James Riotti is the son of the lipo group, Moktor Riotti. Young James... Is that our boy? Hello? Yep. So, <laughs> young James was found guilty of and paid a multi-million dollar fine for giving the Clintons a million dollars in illegal political contributions. Now, here's the big part, Jim. Riotti owns one of the largest strip mines of coal in the Indonesian islands. So you pay a million dollars to the Clintons as a bribe and Clinton takes your competition that would have put out 62 billion tons, $1.2 trillion, out of play. And you still get to have the super duper <laughs> Indonesian coal subsidy. That's why we shut down the coal mines here. Well, of course. So, folks, there's always, and what I've learned over and, the nine years, and now, anytime you see something happening strong here, there is something and devious Jim, elsewhere. If us two peons know about this, why doesn't Jeff Sessions? You know, I'm just, I'm just the rhetorical question. We know the answer to that, but, but if, if he and I can find out about this, gee, you know, <laughs> it's interesting. It is amazing. You know, there are some interesting things that are going on up in Washington. Oh, yeah. And there's some interesting <laughs> stories that are going on up in Washington. First off, we have a demoted DOJ official whose wife worked for the firm that put together the anti-Trump dossier. dossier. 
with close ties to Fusion GPS. Okay. Ms. Nellie H. Orr is the wife of defrocked... Connie said power the money. <laughs> yes, DOJ official Bruce Orr, who worked for the opposition research firm. The precise nature of Ms. Orr's duties remain unclear, but a review of her published works available online reveals she has written extensively on, get this, Russia-related subjects. <laughs> and, of course, the dossier Fusion GPS attracted scrutiny because Republican lawmakers spent the better part of this year investigating the dossier, which was funded by Hillary, I always love her name, Rodham. Rodham. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Clinton. I have some annotations. And the DNC. <laughs> but here's the rub. It was initially paid for by the establishment GOP. Now... This thing is possibly the basis for the FISA surveillance on Trump last year. So, folks, let's get this straight. We have Jim Jordan questioning FBI Director Christopher Wray about the origin of the FISA warrants. Remember that little conversation that Bill had with Loretta Lynch on the tarmac, and then all of a sudden a FISA warrant was granted? And do you know that that judge has now recused himself from some of the other cases, like Mr. Flynn? Remember, remember Flynn? Well, this same judge was over the Flynn case and recused himself because he's the one who issued the FISA warrant to do the surveillance. Wait, that implicated Flynn. Yeah. But 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 Jim, what this says is that FBI agent Strzok took the fake dossier and used that as evidence <clears throat> to get the the FISA warrant with that same judge to surveil Flynn and Trump, and it was illegal. So does that mean that since the judge has recused himself, uh oh, oh, a federal judge might be in trouble because he's over the FISA court and he issued a warrant based on false pretenses and he knew it was false. Boo! Up, 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 Nothing up. will happen now. Oh, I know. It's nice to talk about it, though. Now, DACA. That's a dirty word. 33 House Republicans put DACA, illegal aliens before American workers, in a letter to Speaker Ryan. And folks, you can all sleep well. Not a single Louisiana House member name was on this list. Not one. I'm so very, I'm amazed. A certain one out of New Orleans. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, right? Well, these are Republicans. Yeah, well. These are Republicans. 33 Republican U.S. want to put young illegal aliens who received unconditional uh, unconditional DACA amnesty ahead of the interests of American workers. No, 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 no. According to the letter, they all signed address to the House Speaker, Paul Ryan. While they did mention their desire to improve border security and to fix the broken immigration system, they offered no specifics, and they did not suggest that those fixes or any other immigration-related provisions be paired with DACA. DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And here's the rub about this, Jim. I mean, Number one, these are not kids anymore. Number two, Obama purposely took out any security vetting so a bunch of criminals, juvenile criminals, gang members, got through purposely uh -huh. and have now since committed crimes of their own while in this country. This DACA program is another joke. This is, this is a travesty. Now we have, <clears throat> see that the liberals, their green thing got shot down the river. The whole green agenda. Now, 50 plus female Democratic lawmakers urge investigation into Trump allegations. We already know that those allegations have been defunct. That none of those people. Oh. Go ahead, Goatman. 
Yeah, this DACA thing, uh, Luis Gutierrez oh, yeah. said that they need to vote on it now. He's from, he's from the land of Lincoln, you know. He's from up north up there. Oh, I'm familiar but, with his worthless butt. Uh, this this piece of garbage crap that they got going on, uh, coming to this country illegally, therefore they broke a law. Yep. And uh, they have so many years that they've been here, they haven't even tried to become citizens. They're still speaking Espanol. Yep. And um, yeah. <clears throat> they want to be like the little, good little, they don't want to be Americans. They're like the other race. They want to be hyphenated Americans. Yep. You're right. Um, coming to this country, it's the people, it's the Americans that should have to say so who comes here or not. And, um, well, goat man, it's not this a is, right, it's a privilege. This is the same bunch of corrupt son of a buggers that were sitting up in Washington full well knowing that Obama was a Kenyan born national, was not a U.S. And they didn't citizen. Do nothing about it. Correct. They're all complicit in that. Correct. Same bunch. You yeah, right? I just, yep. um, we are, we are not in a free country anymore. I don't That's care correct. what anybody says. You are correct. Um, yep. You are correct. Yeah, it's, just, um, it's a travesty. Uh, it's going to be worse than that. <laughs> well, goat man, I'm with you, and, and you already know how I feel. This thing is going to get no, to yeah. a point where it's going to pop. Yeah, I know. It's going to be like a, a zit on a big gal, but... Yep. <laughs> Pop. Pop goes yeah. the boil. It's going to be something else there. Uh, yeah, hold on. My old dog's barking outside. Something aggravating him. I'm going to catch y'all there. All right, the buddy. Show. Yep. Adios. You see, now they went after more. Now they're now Soros using his money. Believe me, he's the one funding this to go after Trump. More than 50 Democratic lawmakers Monday asked leaders in the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform to open an investigation into the allegations of sexual misconduct against President Donald Trump. At least 17 women have publicly accused the president of sexual misconduct. Nakasha Soydnoff recounted how the president pushed her against the wall and forced his tongue down her throat. Now, I'd like to see a picture of her because... Jim, here's my comment on that, and we talked about this. Folks, you look at a picture of the troll women that they have got <laughs> accusing Donald Trump. And I mean troll. Some of these women are so butt ugly, they fell off of a tree and hit every limb on the way down, okay? You take a look historically, and there's lots of pictures, of Donald Trump and his women. Let me tell you, he's got about eight zeros after his name, and they show pictures of him at the Playboy Club when he was single, surrounded by Playboy bunnies and all of the starlets and movie stars and famous models, including the world-famous model he currently lives with. There ain't a dog amongst them. First off. Second off. These women can falsify allegations till hell freezes. They cannot act in the House on the president unless it was done while he was, was president. president. Anything else don't count. <clears throat> and they already took a run at Trump. That, that crazy Hispanic guy, I think he's from Texas, made a run at Trump a couple weeks ago, and the House, it, 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 it was so stupid, it was like, what, 400 to like 2? It was something crazy like that against the impeachment vote. Folks, this is all a bunch of hog hogwash. One of my favorite people. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sarah. Oh, look, look, they did a good job putting her Reiterated there. Reiterated to reports Monday and last week that American voters decided what they thought of the allegations when they voted Trump into office. In and I heard, her, I heard her say that. Me too. I heard her say that. The idea of sending a formal letter to Gowdy and Cummings to open an investigation into accusations against the president has been percolating for quite quite a bit. But there's nothing they can investigate. There is nothing. Lois Frankel said Monday, but the timing did not feel right until recently. Why yes. is that? 
because everything else has failed. Yeah. They tried the Russian collusion Russian thing. Russian collusion. They found out that it was the Democrats. Yep. Nothing has stuck. They've tried everything. And then they're trying this. And this Senator Kirsten... Kirsten Gillibrand. Kirsten Gillibrand. She's the one that took Hillary's place. Money that the president should resign. But if he did not, she said Congress should investigate the multiple sexual harassment and assault allegations and against Jim, him. And Jim, did you see the other thing that happened? Faux Kahanist Senator Elizabeth oh, 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 oh. Warren said <laughs> that Trump, in his retort, slut-shamed Kristen Gillibrand. So Trump didn't imply none of that. So Senator Warren is saying that Senator Gillibrand is a slut and got shamed. <laughs> oh, you can't make this up. You can't. So what does he think? What do they think about Hillary? If Gillibrand's a slut, what is Hillary? Oh my God, a troll? The order plan said in November President Clinton should have resigned. That's a lie because she campaigned for for Hillary. I know. That's a lie. Three of Trump's accusers appeared at a news conference Monday demanding Congress investigate the allegations against the president. They can't. We cannot ignore the multitude of Did women who have